Hello everybody and welcome to video 7 in this Rust programming tutorial series. In this video I'll be going over conditions, compound conditions, and control flow, so if, else, if, and else. Now if you're wondering why my camera is not on, I'm just not feeling the greatest right now, and it's easier for me to record without the face cam and the lights and all of that, so for now in the next few videos I probably won't have a camera. Hopefully you guys don't mind, but likely in the future the camera will be back. All right, with that said, let's dive in. I know you guys understand these topics, or most likely you do if you've seen other programming languages before, so I'll go relatively quickly and just show you the core operators and syntax and all of that. All right, so let's start with a condition. Now, a condition is really just any expression that evaluates to true or false or the Boolean data type. So you can uh, create conditions using conditional operators, and the operators that we have in Rust are very familiar to other programming languages. We have the less than operator, the greater than operator, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, uh, not equal to, and then is equal to with two equal signs. So pretty straightforward, but these are the six core operators you can use when you are comparing different uh, types or not different types, I guess, different values together in an expression. And when you use these operators, your expression is going to value, evaluate, sorry, to true or false. So let's have a look at a quick example. Let me do something like let con standing for condition equal to less than three. Let me make sure I don't forget my semicolon. We can then print this out and you can take a guess at what you think the result's gonna be, although it's pretty straightforward. And you'll notice that we get true because two is indeed less than three. Then of course we could do less than or equal to. Now if we put a two here, this will evaluate to true. And I think you get the point, that is the basics. Now one thing to note here is that when you are comparing objects that are different types to each other, you can run into errors. So let's just see what happens if I do something like two less than or equal to 2.2. Now when I run this code here, notice that I actually get an exception and it says no implementation for integer less than float and integer greater than float. So it says expected integer, found floating point number instead. So you need to make sure that you're using the same types on the left and the right hand side. Uh, and if you are trying to compare, say a float to an int, then you need to convert in this case, the int to a float so that you have the same type and you're not losing any data from your float. So in this case, if we want to fix this, what we can do is something like two as, and then I'm just going to say this is an F32. I believe by default, this will be an F32 as well. And now when we try to do this comparison here, Let's go cargo run. Notice that we get true because now we have the same type on the left and the right hand side. If you're unfamiliar with how to do the type conversions, then refer to the last video because I showed them uh, quite in depth how you convert all of the different types and variables and all of that. OK, so that is a condition. I think we have the basics on that. Now let's look at compound conditions. Now, a compound condition, at least what I like to call them as compound conditions, is just multiple conditions kind of chained together using something called logical operators. Now, the logical operators are your and, or, and not. However, in Rust, they are uh, represented with some different syntax. So in Python, for example, you just write and, but in Rust, the and is going to be two ampersands, the or is going to be two pipes, and then the not is going to be an exclamation point here. So these are the three logical operators in Rust. Again, this is and, this is or, and this is not. Now, if you're unfamiliar with these, let's do a quick example. So let's do something like condition two is equal to, and then I'm going to say true and cont. Now, what this is doing is essentially checking if both the left and the right hand side are true. So the and operator will return true if the left and the right are true, but if either the left or the right are false or both of them are false, it will return false. So in this case, I have true and the condition. We know this condition is true, and so we'll get true here if we print out con2. So let's go and do this and notice that we get true. Whereas if I make this one false here, well, this is still true. But now since one of the sides is false, we're going to get false. Okay, that is the and operator, fairly straightforward. And of course, if we had two falses here, we would also get false. Okay, now let's look at or. So the or operator is simply two pipes, and this tells us if either the left or the right hand side are true. So if either of them are true, we get true. Uh, if both of them are false, we get false. So let's run this cargo run and notice we get true. And just to show you here, if both of them are true, then we will also get true because either the left or the right hand side is true. And there you go, we got true. OK, so that is the or operator. And then lastly, we have the not operator, which I like to call the negation operator. And what this does is simply flip whatever the result is or, uh, of an expression or whatever the Boolean value is to the opposite. 
I know that was kind of a mouthful, but what I mean by that is that if this expression evaluates to true and we have a not outside of it, it's going to make it false. So we simply flip whatever it is. Whereas if this was a false and we have the not, then it would become true. So it just makes it the opposite. So if I run this here, cargo run, notice that I get false because inside of here we did have true and then we applied the not and that made it false. Whereas if I go here and I say true or not cont, or I do something like, I guess, false or not cont, now what's going to happen is we're going to negate whatever the value of this condition is. So we should end up getting false or false, and that should lead us to a false result here, uh, which is what we get. Now we get some warnings here. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why. Oh, it's saying we don't need the parentheses. Okay, well, that's fine. We can leave them for now. Okay, so let's actually just clear the screen here and continue. All right, so that is the basics for the logical operators. Uh, one last thing I will mention here is there is a precedence when you are applying the different operators. Uh, the way it goes is you're going to apply all of your nots first, then you're going to apply your ands, then you're going to apply your ors. Now, the only exception here is if you have parentheses, then you're going to apply whatever's in the parentheses first, just like you would in arithmetic uh, operations. Okay, so hopefully you got that. We're going to do not and and then or I won't go through an example here, but it is useful to just remember you have the not and or so if you're ever looking at a um, what do you call it a compound condition that doesn't have parentheses, you know, in what order you need to apply the different operators. OK, so we have con we have con two. Now what I think we'll do is simply write an if else if and else statement and just show you the basic control flow here in Rust and then we can end the video. So let's get rid of this print line. Let's just do something like let food equals and I'm just going to go with something like a cookie for now. And let's write an if statement that simply checks the value of food uh, against some conditions that we have. And if those conditions are true, we'll print something. Otherwise, we won't print something. So an if statement is like this in Rust. You write if you write some condition. In this case, I'm going to say food is equal to and then cookie. And then you open up your curly braces like this. And inside of the curly braces, you can write anything that you'd like to happen when this condition is true. So pretty straightforward. But if whatever you place here is true, then you're going to do what's inside of these curly braces. So in this case, let's just go print line. And inside of here, we can do actually I won't do a formatting string. I'll just say I like cookies to exclamation point. OK, let's run the code here. And notice that I get an error because I forgot my semicolon. So let's add our semicolons here. I keep forgetting to do that. And now we should see that we get the string. I like cookies too, because this condition is true. Now, of course, if we change this to be not equal to and we run the code fairly intuitively, nothing is going to print out because this condition was not true. OK, that's it for the if statement. Now, with an if statement, we can also use an else if statement or an else. So I'll start with the else. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. What the else allows us to do is essentially run if this condition is not true. So if the if statement doesn't run, then whatever's inside of the else will run. So we're going to do one of the two things here, but never both. I'm going to say here. Oh, that's too bad. Exclamation point. OK, so now let's just change this to be not equal to. Although that doesn't quite make sense with what we're printing, but that's fine. And notice that I get, oh, that's too bad because this condition wasn't true. So we defaulted to the uh, to the else, sorry, and we did here. Now, of course, if this was true, then we wouldn't run what's inside of the else. Great. Now we're almost done here. The last thing to show you is that we can also add something called an else if. Now, you can have as many of these else ifs as you'd like, but they need to come after an if statement, meaning you can't just write an else if randomly. You can only write it after an if statement and before any optional else. Now, as you saw, we also don't need the else or the else if statement. I just wanted to show you that we can have uh, multiple of these, right? So if I have else if here, I can do another condition now. And the way this works is if I check this and it's false, I will then check this. And if it's true, I'll do whatever's inside of here. If it is not true, then I'll default to the else. So I have an option here to check multiple conditions in a row. So in this case, I can say if food is equal to fruit, then maybe we just do something like print line. That sounds healthy, right? And we'll keep the exclamation point. And now if I change this to say fruit, what's going to happen is we'll check this condition. It will be false. Since it's false, we will then check this condition. It'll be true. And then we'll print this out. And there you go. OK, so let's clear. Let's run and notice that I get that sounds healthy. 
Now, one thing to note here is that if this condition is true, we will not check any of these or will not do any of these statements. So if even if this condition story is true, but this one is true as well, we will never execute this line of code because as soon as we find the first true condition, we execute the block and then we skip the rest of it. So keep that in mind. You need to kind of put your conditions in the order in which you want to check them. Now with the else if we can have multiple of these, as I mentioned, so I can just paste another one here and say else if uh, food is equal to, and I don't know what we want to go with here. I'll just say bread and I'll say that sounds boring. Okay. And then if we change this to bread, let's go here and notice that we are going to get that sound board. All right. So I think that is all that I need to show you in this video. Uh, this is fairly straightforward. Again, I imagine most of you already know these concepts. That's why I'm kind of going over them fairly quickly. Just to reiterate here, when we do an if statement, we simply write the condition. If this condition is true, then we're going to execute whatever's inside of the current curly brace block. And we're going to skip all of the rest of the statements that are part of this if statement. Now, if this statement is not true or if the condition is not true, then we're going to go and check all of the other conditions until we find one that's true. So if this one is true, we execute this, we skip the rest. If it's false, then we execute the next one or we check the next one. Uh, if it's true, we do this, we skip the rest. If it's false, then we just default to the else here and do whatever's here. Now, of course, you don't need the else, but if you do have one, it needs to come after any of the else ifs that you have. And same thing with the else if you don't need them. But if you do have one, it needs to come after an if statement. Of course, you can also nest if statements inside of each other. So I could put another one here and do whatever I please inside of this if statement. So with that said, I am going to wrap up the video here. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another one.